this beautiful Sunday morning. Good morning. Call your attention to our announcements. First uh, announcement that's not there but is there, the attendance pads. They're in the center aisle and on the pew side on the center aisle. If you'll sign those and pass them down or fill out the data in those and pass them down, it would be good. Uh, our community Lent luncheons are going well. Uh, this one coming up is at Church of the Ascension. Uh, you need to have your reservations in uh, as soon as possible. Tomorrow would be real good. Tuesday is the latest. Food truck ministry is going on and volunteers are needed for that. Uh, it's a great ministry that is developing, so I encourage you to uh, consider that. Uh, the Lenten Bible study class will be beginning at 11 o'clock uh, with the Barnabas class. Uh, and then the uh, Wednesday night women's Bible study is beginning this uh, Wednesday night. UMCOR is accepting con uh, uh, contributions for the Ukraine crisis. So if you've been wondering about that, what you could do, that is an effective way to answer that. That's the United Minister Committee on Relief and all the money that is taken up for that will go to Ukraine. Now, a very important announcement. Next Sunday, if you arrive at this time, you're going to be late. Yeah, we're going to have one of those 23-hour days. Technically, it's Sunday if you get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, but I think we're going to set our clocks back on Saturday. But anyway, daylight savings time is on us next Sunday. Uh, today, we're having... Uh, a orientation meeting about our uh, call charge conference. It's at uh, uh, two o'clock. It says three here. Yeah, two o'clock this afternoen. Uh, and the bulletin. Oh no, I, was, I looked down at next uh, Saturday. Excuse me, two o'clock. Looked down at the wrong spot. Looked up. Looked back down. Yeah, two o'clock today. And then our last uh, orientation session will be this Wednesday at seven p.m. If you haven't attended the first one, I encourage you to attend one of these two. If you are not informed, it's going to be a very confusing 
ballot. If you are informed, it will be a confusing ballot, <laughs> but not as much. So that's an important thing to, to know all you can so you can make a wise decision. Those are the main announcements at this point in time. Let's now prepare ourselves for worship. with you. And also you. Oh Lord our God, we thank you for this day. It's the day you have made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. You have sustained us through the darkness and you bless us with life today. The truth is that your grace is better than life. So may we welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives. Open our eyes to truly see ourselves and to grow more like you, Lord Jesus. May our worship and praise be pleasing to you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 428. You'll stand and sing for the healing of the nations.
sung in the wonder and glory of God and what can be. Now the important question that the Apostles' Creed, among others, is a very good answer, is Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Apostles Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, as we come to this place, Lord, we're reminded of your sacrifice, how you came and died and rose again, that we might have life abundantly. Lord, you taught us how to love. You taught us how to give. And so, Lord, we come to this place to give unto you not only our praise and our worship, but also to give unto you our tithes and our offerings. Lord, receive these and bless your church with love and wisdom and courage, truly to use them for the advancing of your kingdom. In Christ we pray. Amen. Please be seated. There is a hall in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a hall in Gilead to heal the sin. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain, but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a call. invite the children to come to children's time at the altar and please before you're seated greet one another would you welcome each other to the church today
Dear Lord, Dear Lord, help me, help me, resist temptation, to resist temptation, and stay focused on you. Stay focused on you. In your holy and precious name. In your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Now I have a challenge for you guys. If you can hold on to your one until your parents come pick you up, is that a good deal? Uh, one other thing very quickly, uh, if you did not pick up a, a communion cup on your way in, I invite you to do that as we sing the next hymn uh, there in the, um, as you came in by the doors and the windows, I invite you to do that if you haven't already done that. But let's sing again. A beautiful hymn, this is the first Sunday of Lent, and, uh, of Lent, and one of my favorite Lenten hymns is What Wondrous Love Is This, 292. May we stand together as we sing, 292. As we go to our time of prayer, we'll have our musical interlude. 
lift your concerns, your petitions, and I will lead us forward. As we come before you today, we know that war is raging in the Ukraine. Lord, we pray for the people of the Ukraine and all they're going through. Lord, we pray for the people in Russia, for those that have been brave enough to risk being arrested, and worse than that, just to protest this war. Lord, we pray for our world in this troubling situation, and we pray for peace. Lord, we pray that Russian President Putin might change his heart. We pray that fervently, Lord, and that this madness might come to an end. Oh, Lord God, your grace forgives all sin. So grace is the most powerful force in the world. In our baptism and in our profession of faith, we became rerooted that is completely regenerated. Christianity is a completely different way to live. This is more than a change of ethics. It's to have a real identity with Christ, your eternal DNA. This is a turnabout from the world's way. We are a disciple of Christ. May we realize it's terrible to stomp on your mercy with muddy feet. Yet at times, we think we know better than you, God. Yes, that's arrogant. You're right, should be obvious. Yet sometimes in our ignorance, we overlook it. We think it's okay to ignore a wrong. We think it's just a bad choice somebody made and even we made at times yet how can we die to sin and go on living in it the scriptures tell us that it's foolish to continue in sin in order that grace may abound in our baptism into you Lord Jesus we died to sin and we arose changed Our old self died, and we are now to walk in a newness of life. We are becoming at one with you, Lord Jesus. We are freed from our past, dead to its sins, and now we live for Christ. Jesus was stronger than sin in his temptations, and we also can be by your indwelling presence, Holy Spirit, Jesus can keep any of us, even in our extreme weakness, from falling into sin's snares or yielding our obedience to sin's commands. The blood of Jesus redeemed us. Let it be. The Lord, God, we know that this world is both yours and sin. And they're competing as weapons. So which side are we going to be on? If we're a Christian, we've chose you, Lord Jesus. So keep each of us from the sins of action. Alone, we're helpless. But with you and the Holy Spirit, we can overcome our sin. We can grow well and be good. We can be the people you've called us to be. We are your people. We claim it. You are the director of our lives. Thank you. We pray aloud the prayer that you gave us that we call the Lord's Prayer as we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Hear God's word. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. And when they were over, he was famished. And the devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me and I will give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and pray, placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. I think I 
I, I think I, I function pretty well under pressure. I'm one of those people who, who remain pretty calm and, and, and collected and, and deal with whatever's at hand. I'm also one of those that three or four days later fall apart realizing what I've just been through. But I'm nothing like Brianna Hill. Now, you don't know her. You don't have any reason to know her. But I'm impressed by her. Brianna Hill was going to become a, a lawyer. She was going to take the bar exam. She was going to do that a couple of years ago. Well, what happened? COVID hit and, and they postponed her bar exam. They made it virtual, they postponed it. Well, no problem with that, except the date they postponed it to was the day she was scheduled to give birth to her first child. She went ahead and, and, and took the exam. She was on her computer, sitting in her chair, when, sure enough, her water broke. She called her midwife that was helping her and said, look, this is the situation. I really need about another two hours to finish this exam. We have two days, today and tomorrow, and I need to do this. The midwife said, I think you have time. Go ahead. I'll be right over and I'll be with you. So she finished the exam. They rushed her to the hospital. She had kind of a, a difficult delivery. The next day, she had not sleep. She was fighting anemia and she had to go back online and she did the second half of the bar exam. She passed the bar with flying colors. The baby turned out just beautiful and perfect. And six months later, she got her dream job. Wow, how did she do it? Several people asked, how in the world did you do that? How did you pass the bar while you were basically giving birth? You know what she said? She said, I was totally prepared for both major events in my life both emotionally and physically and intellectually. Our scripture lesson today is about Jesus dealing with his temptation in the wilderness experience. And I think it's a lesson for all of us. Now, you know, we, we come to this text every first Sunday of Lent. And today, I'm not going to deal with the various temptations. We do that normally. Today, I want to say how our wilderness times, like Jesus' wilderness times, our wilderness times, our training grounds for experiencing God's presence and God's power and God's purpose in our life. The story this morning is an interesting one. We didn't read the, the whole story. We didn't read the beginning of the story where Jesus was baptized. But Jesus went to the Jordan to be baptized uh, by John. Uh, John baptized Jesus. The Holy Spirit came down upon him in the form of a dove. God spoke from the heavens. All that is amazing. Fantastic. But to me, what's most amazing is then the Spirit, the Scripture says, that the Spirit led Jesus out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, now, now every time I read that, I think I read it wrong. The Holy Spirit led Jesus out into the wilderness to be tempted. God did that. God, the Spirit, led Jesus and then he's starting to think, well, yeah. And in fact, nearly every biblical hero had some sort of wilderness experience before they began their ministry. Nearly all those who did something significant for the kingdom had a time of fears and questions or doubts and pain or a time when God was just completely silent. And it wasn't a punishment. Sometimes it's just God's way to prepare us. To pair of those who he calls to be teachers and leaders and witnesses and Christians. All who do work for the kingdom. And all those who do great work for the kingdom have been through some sort of wilderness experience. So, so what can we, we make of all that? Let me lift up a few things to you. The first insight we get from reading today's story is that if we're planning to do anything significant with our life, we need to get ready for the wilderness. As crazy as it sounds, we need the discomfort. We need the, 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 the temptation. We need the, the, the wilderness experience in order, in order to grow, in order to be all that God created us to be. 
Yeah, I, I've said it before that, that, you know, driving in to church most mornings, especially this time of year, I get the sunlight right in my eyes. And there's certain places along my path where the sunlight is absolutely blinding. Well, I just absolutely cannot see in front of me. I need to be very, very cautious. I need to stop or go another way or, turn, or do something to be, to be safe. In other words, sunlight, all sunlight is just as blinding as all darkness. We need these experiences in our lives. We need the temptations. We need the hard times. We need the painful times. That wilderness experience is the pathway to power and to peace. Let me tell you, so an instructor in the Air Force Academy, he discovered that, that he, was, you know, he was teaching his class, but, but he discovered that the students needed something more than the physical and mental training that he was provided. They needed to hear some real life stories of the life and death challenges that they would face out on the field of battle. They would never understand the dangers of warfare from simply reading a book or listening to, to his academic explanations. So he decided to bring in some veterans, to bring in some people who had been there, to share their stories, to help pre prepare them. He brought in one fellow. This fellow had been part of what they called Delta Force. He had been one of those elite soldiers who would go into very uh, dangerous situations and do amazing things. And he was telling the, the youngsters about, about some of the experiences he had, some of the, some of the missions he had. And the kids were just fascinated by that. He was telling about the weaponry he had and the communication devices he had and all the electronic stuff that he carries with him when they go on these, on these missions. And the kids kept asking questions and questions and questions about all the stuff he had. Finally, he stopped and he says, he said, I need to tell you guys something. He says, you need to understand this. I survived all right, but it was not because of what I had on me. It's what I had in me that made the difference. It wasn't because of what I had, had on me. It's what I had in me that made the difference, he told them. A fellow named Bonhoeffer wrote a book on temptation. And he said this. He says, Satan does not fill us with the hatred of God, but rather the forgetfulness of God. Satan doesn't, doesn't fill us with the hatred of God. But the forgetfulness of God. We cannot be victorious over temptation. We can't be victorious over the wilderness without the Spirit of God within us. The forgetfulness of God results in discouragement. And that results in, in, in regret and alienation from God. See, Jesus wanted to save us from all that kind of pain. So he chose to go through the wilderness himself to show us how to persevere. And how to remain faithful. And his lesson to us is. Prepare yourself. For the wilderness too. Another insight. I'd like to lift up is. We need to decide ahead of time. To trust our pain. To God's purpose. To trust our discomfort. To trust our temptation. To trust our troubled time. To God's purpose. Decide to make friends. With our discomfort. When you find yourself in the wilderness, when you find yourself in uncomfortable and painful situations, we can get very bitter. We can blame God. We can turn our backs on God. Or we can use those experiences to help us grow. You know, pain gives us clues. Sometimes something hurts in our body. It's, it's, it's horrible. But it's a clue to help us to know what's wrong, what's diseased, what's dying, what's not working properly. The most dangerous types of illnesses are those where there is no pain. Some cancers, by the time the doctors find it, it's too invasive to heal. If there had been pain, the doctor might have found it quicker, realized what it was, and treated it before it became deadly. Pain, even emotional and spiritual pain, can tell us what we need to focus on. And if I make friends with that pain, then it's just something there to guide me, to teach me. There's something special that happens 
in the lives of those who trust their pain to God and refuse to come better. One day they can look back over their lives and they'll see that God used that pain to plant seeds of hope and strength in their lives and in other people's lives as well. You see, when, when, when that happens, we can become a wilderness guide for other people who are going through hard times, painful times, uncomfortable times. And someone will thank God for the lessons that we taught them with our lives. And we'll be able to look back at our wilderness times, our painful times, our uncomfortable times, not with bitterness, but with gratitude. And the last thing I want to say to you is this. We need to focus on our eternal purpose more than we need to focus on our immediate circumstances. Let me tell you what I mean by that. We need to, to live into the, the, the ultimate and don't get sidetracked by the pun ultimate. I think it was Zig Ziglar who said that the number one reason why folks don't reach their goals in life is that they trade what they want most for what they want now. They trade what they want most for what they want now. That's a great temptation. A great temptation that we all face, especially in our spiritual lives. How tragic it would be if we never fulfilled God's will for our lives because we traded what we wanted most as God's people, as Christians, as disciples of Christ, if we traded what we want most for what we want now. You know, as I read these temptations, it, it's, it's almost humorous. And, and, and think about this. It's, it's almost humorous how ineffective Satan's plan is in our text today. Have you ever thought about this? That Satan is offering Jesus everything that Jesus already gave up in order to be fully human and to walk in our shoes. Satan is tempting Jesus with everything that Jesus gave up in order to come to earth and to walk in our shoes. Jesus had all of that already. Jesus poured himself into human form so he could experience what we're experiencing. Phil Yancey makes the point that, that the first temptation story in the Bible, when Satan was tempting Adam and Eve, he was tempting them with the question, can you be like God? You know, God doesn't want you to eat this fruit because if you eat this fruit, then you'll have all knowledge and you'll be like God. Can you be like God? That's what Satan was tempting Adam and Eve with. Now in Jesus' encounter in the wilderness, Satan is tempting Jesus with a completely different question. Can you be human? Can you be truly human? Satan is trying to undo Jesus' humanity in order to undo Jesus' choice to become Emmanuel, God with us. He is challenging Jesus to take back the power, take back the majesty, take back the authority he left at the throne of God to question his decision to become a sacrifice, to sacrifice himself for you and for me. Question the decision to go through the pain and the death. Jesus knew, Jesus knew what he was going to have to go through. He knew that we would abandon him. He knew that he would be tortured. He knew that he would be killed. And he knew that he would have to endure it all in order to fulfill God's eternal plan. And God used his obedience so that you and I can have eternal life. As I said at the beginning of this message, God reserves his greatest work for those who have been through the wilderness. So I ask, what about you? Are you giving up what is eternal for the now? Or are you willing to live into the ultimate, into God's plan for your life? Even though it may be hard, even though it may be a wilderness that you don't desire to go into. You know, I did something my first um, let that I was, was, was with you. 
but I, I, I want to do it again uh, today on this first Sunday of Lent. I want to give you a, a chance to symbolically make that choice. Uh, I've got some paper bags. Would you guys, would you put the paper bags out? Uh, Stan, would you put, put? In, the, in the table in the back and, and uh, where you got the communion elements, there's a, there's a paper sack there. And inside that paper sack are, 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 are two items. Uh, some absolutely beautiful stones with, uh, with, a, with a cross inlaid on them. Uh, and, and, and the other thing that's, uh, that's in there are some lottery tickets, <laughs> some scratch off lottery tickets. I want that stone to represent the way of the cross, the way of sacrifice, the way of doing the right thing, even if it's hard. It represents the Christ led life, doing the eternal thing. And then there's some lottery tickets in the bag. That's the best representative I could think of to represent giving up the eternal for the now. They're instant winners, instant gain, instant reward. But at the expense of giving up the real and the eternal. So after we receive communion on your way out, I invite you to reach your hand into those bags. And just take whichever one you want. Don't let anybody see. It's just between you and God. If you take a stone, you're saying to yourself, I choose today the way of the cross. I'll not resent my wilderness. I may fuss with God, but ultimately I will honor. It is a chance to grow, to prepare, to be more like Christ. Put on your nightstand. Put on your desk to remind you to trust God, to trust God with your life, even your pain, even your death. If you take a lottery ticket, right, you'll simply be telling yourself, this Lent, I choose to spend my time and my efforts on today, carpe diem, okay? seize the day. And by the way, they're good lottery tickets. I'm pretty lucky. You might win thousands of dollars by coming to church today. Who knows? Which will you pick? Which will you pick? Right now, let's turn in our hymnals, though, to page 13. There you see the prayer of great thanksgiving. May we pray this prayer together as we read responsively. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Oh, it is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup. He lifted the cup and he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
May them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to take the little communion cup and turn it so the bread is, is side is up and pull back the white tab accessing the, the little wafer and take this for this is the body of Christ which is given for you. May we eat together. Amen. And if you turn it over and pull back the second white tab to access the, the juice. This is the blood of Christ, which was shed for you. Amen. Almighty God, as we have partaken of the cup and of the bread, your body, your blood, Lord God, may it strengthen us. And may, Lord, we go forth from this place with the knowledge that you love us, and that you will always be with us. Lord, live within us, strengthen us, prepare us for what lies ahead, and may we honor you in all that we do. In Christ we pray. Amen. I invite you now to sing together one final hymn, I Surrender All, 354. Let's stand together as we sing.
take one. The rock or, or chicken. And may God bless you. And may God bless you this day and all days. Go forth. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God. And may the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. And be blessed by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go enjoy Christ.